Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. My name is Nick Chen, a lawyer and lawmaker, and I'm your host for this episode. Today's guest is the Honourable Paul Chen, the Financial Secretary of Hong Kong. He's been serving the public in this role since 2017. Now, Paul, welcome to Friday Beyond yeah, Spotlights. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I now, we are here at the revitalized heritage building, Mayhaw House, the only surviving Mark I H-shaped resettlement public housing block built in 1954 to rehouse some of the 58,000 victims from the huge fire that ravaged Hong Kong on the Christmas night of 1953. Um, Paul, does this place look familiar to you? Very familiar, because I grew up in this neighborhood, just a few blocks away in what they call the Tai Hang Sai Estate. Plus, you were so kind to uh, re be the official guest to reopen the uh, revitalized museum. Oh, yes. That was quite a couple of years ago. We were yeah, most grateful. We, yeah, we are so happy because this revitalized heritage building now become a landmark in this area. Very popular. Not just the locals enjoy this place, but also some uh, tourists. That's right. Uh, Paul, I know you are CUHK, uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and also Harvard Business School graduate. Yep. Now, as a financial secretary for the Hong Kong SAR government, what does your portfolio and daily work entail? Well, basically, you know, in the government set up, there are all together 15 bureaus, plus the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. So I'm responsible for overseeing six of them, plus the Hong Kong MA. Wow. Basically, my portfolio covers economic development, uh, resources, resources in terms of land supply, in terms of money, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then the financial services sector, innovation and technology, as well as land supply, housing. So quite an extensive portfolio. Yes, indeed. Um, you represented Hong Kong at the APEC leaders meeting and therefore uh, for the World Economic Forum, and you met with the World Trade Organization. Yeah. Can I learn from you, uh, what are the key important takeaways, learnings, action items from those important meetings for you? and also for our business audience uh, who have regional headquarters in Hong Kong? Well, you know, uh, after a couple of years uh, going through the COVID, typically across the different jurisdictions, government are facing budget deficit for a couple of years. So how to tackle it, mm. how to take a, a more sensible approach mm. in terms of uh, fiscal consolidation, mm. returning the budget to balance, is one of the key subjects of discussion. Mm. And then the other one is, is that, you know, given the geopolitics, mm. uh, political economic fermentation has been varying. So mm. people are talking about how to work together, how to promote multilateral trading and investment. So a lot of interesting discussions. Of course, another important agenda item was climate change. Oh yes. But indeed. one important takeaway for me it, is that although the the conference, the APEC conference was held in San Francisco, but in, it seems to me the center of attention is about China. Mm. So President Xi's presence attract a lot of attention. And uh, inside the meeting and uh, during the coffee break, mm. a lot of discussion was about mainland economy, mm. uh, the importance of mainland's economic growth to the global growth. Yes, so if China does well, does the world get smaller or does it get better? So, you know, in our country all along, we are promoting multilateralism, promoting trade, investment, cross-border cooperation, and particular, particularly the emphasis on just it on not just growing by yourself, mm. but to help also the developing countries, yes. uh, helping those in need so that the fruit of economic success can be shared. So it's better financial inclusion and making the world a better world, a, a fairer share of the economic growth. Now the World Economic Forum ranked Hong Kong as the third most competitive uh, economy in the world. Now what is the role of Hong Kong in China's, you know, our country's 14th national five-year plan, uh, especially with regard to modernization of China through circulation strategy and internationalization of the renminbi. Well, you know, in the 14 five-year plan, Hong Kong has been given eight directions to mm. develop. Mm. Uh, it seems to me, in terms of economic growth, the most important two areas are financial services mm -hmm. and innovation and technology. I think on these two areas, 
area, we could make a lot of contribution to the country as well as our own economic growth. Mm. Financial services is clear. Yep. We are the financial service, international financial center in Asia. Yes. And we will continue to work hard to stay competitive, mm. to stay ahead of the game. Mm. So recently, in terms of the equity market, in terms mm. of the bond market, mm. uh, in terms of, uh, say, for example, web fee, mm. uh, virtual assets. Yes. Uh, we have been taking a lot of initiatives to drive ourselves forward. Mm. Another area is innovation and technology because Hong Kong being Hong Kong, mm. under the one country, two systems arrangement, mm. on the one hand, we are ch part of China. Yep. We have very convenient and priority access to the mainland market. Mm. But at the same time, we are international facing mm. with the institutional arrangement, common law, mm. the law of law, yep. FIFO of capital, goods, mm. data, and money. Mm. So we will be able to bridge the mainland and the international community mm. and being a magnet to attract international investments mm. and international businesses coming to Hong Kong. Mm. Over the past two years during this term of government, we have been trying very hard to attract more strategic enterprises to come to Hong Kong, mm. to attract more talents to come to Hong Kong. Mm. I, I think we have made good progress. What have you got up your sleeve? <laughs> you, know, um, you know, some neighboring countries, they offer a lot of money, um, short term. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what do you say to that? We have to be confident about ourselves. Mm. We must fully understand the relative competitive position mm. and ask ourselves, what is the value proposition of Hong Kong to these international businesses? Mm. It seems to me, number one, when you come here, you have convenient access not just to the mainland market but also the Asia market mm. so uh, when people come here to explore this part of the world uh, the return is good mm -hmm. number one yep. number two the lifestyle here a very welcoming society East Miss West yes. in terms of culture in terms of uh, cosmopolitan life mm. a lot of attraction so Fantastic. people tend to come and then when people come, they tend to bring their family. Education here is wonderful. Out of the eight universities here, five are within global 100. So in terms of quality, education, quality of education, it is top class. It's amazing. Yeah, even for, say, uh, international schools, we have over 50 offering different curriculums. So it is very attractive to no. expatriates. So uh, I think Going forward, it is about how to make this place even more competitive in, mm. in terms of business, mm. more livable yes. in terms of the living environment, in terms of uh, things that we can offer <laughs> yes. to the family, yes. uh, to people of different interests, mm. so that everyone can enjoy their life here. Um, you know, you are known to be uh, a proponent for a better world, cleaner world. Um, how do we make this uh, you know, more livable place or more diversity inclusion? Are, are we ranked high in diversity inclusion and ESG? I, well, mm. I think Hong Kong is very well regarded in this respect. We mm. are a, very, a city of diversity mm. and this is a city embrace different cultures. Mm. So people living here in harmony and equal opportunities. Uh, well, there is no glass ceiling at all. So everyone can have a level fit playing field to compete and excel. You know, people are sometimes would come to you and say, uh, or if they know I have this opportunity to chat with you, they would say, um, Hong Kong seems to have a narrow tax base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there suggestions about how, what's the best way to go about it? Well, do you we know, need to raise tax? Hong Kong has all along been operating on a simple and low tax regime. Mm. Um, going forward, of course, we have to increase our revenue. Mm. But the way to ex increase revenue, there are different options. Mm. I just mentioned earlier about our effort to attract more businesses to come. So I think it is important to, for us to concentrate, to grow our economy, to make us even more competitive, mm. more attractive, mm. so that we can attract more businesses and talents to come. And they will be able to contribute mm. to our economic development and contribute to our tax revenue. Uh, Paul, this is, uh, as you know, the museum section of Mayhaw House. Yes. This is operated by the um, 
Hong Kong Youth Hostels Association. And apart from operating this revitalized museum, which you helped to open, um, that was quite a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They also uh, operate a very affordable, comfortable um, accommodation for people visiting or staying in Hong Kong. I see. And uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, exhibits. Uh, welcome everyone to come and have a look. And there's a cozy cafe downstairs. Oh, good. Yeah, I think they must be enjoying themselves here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, this is um, one of our Hi. workers here. Hello, financial secretary. Hi, hello. Welcome to Meho House. I'm Yi Tao. Yeah, just call me Paul. I would love to get a global perspective and contribute back to this local community. What do you suggest? Well, I would suggest you to go abroad, tour the world, make some friends, get to know their thinking, get to know their values, their cultures, and invite them to come to Hong Kong as well. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice meeting you. Thank you. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. We have with us today the Financial Secretary of Hong Kong, the Honorable Paul Chan. Who is Paul Chan behind the spotlights? In this show and tell segment, Paul will show us an item that has special meaning or significance to him. Uh, could you show us that very special item and share with us the meaning behind the item? Oh, sure. Well, you know, this is a board given to me mm. during a consultation session with Our dearest second, financial secretary. Yeah, with yes. a group of secondary school students, mm. the question we posed to them was, if you were financial secretary, mm. what would you do? Yes. What would be your priorities? What did the young people say? So they put up different suggestions and uh, very amazing because for these young students, mm. they are concerned about the growth of opportunity for Hong Kong, the opportunities for the young people. Mm. They also care about the environment, how to improve the living environment. Mm. And some of them make very specific suggestions mm. as to how to address to the needs of those underprivileged. Oh, that, that's a good Yeah, so very yeah. interesting. Can you tell us more? Um, did you take it up? Uh, some of the suggestions we mm. did. Uh, so a couple of years ago, we did have picked up those suggestions. And at the beginning of the academic year, give an allowance. Uh, to those uh, oh, okay. needy students. Th yeah. That's smart. Uh, can you share with us um, maybe some of the more unforgettable experience with you serving as a financial secretary? I'm fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to serve Hong Kong. And uh, over the past few years, there have been different challenges. Um, to me, it is humbling because as a government official, I think the most important thing for us is to be able to understand what is happening on the ground. Mm. How do people feel? Mm. What are their mm. concerns? Right. And what are their priorities? Yes. You know, resources are always limited and you have to prioritize. Mm. So I treasure, I treasure the opportunities to interact with different group of people from different social strata. Mm. so that we could be able to better understand mm. and try to tailor-make and modify mm. uh, our measures mm. to better suit them. Mm. It is a continuing process, a learning process. How do you hear and help the people who, in the grassroots who don't have a lot of lobbying power? Of course, some of the NGOs represent them at mm. the budget consultation sessions. Mm. But we also take the initiative to reach out, say for example, going to the uh, market, uh, not just the wet the, market, I the, the wet market <laughs> and also yes. the open market, mm. going to different neighborhoods, mm. uh, visiting the elderly, yes. and sometimes having a cup of milk tea <laughs> in the tea <laughs> shops yeah. together with them. So I think it is full of this discussion. And mm. in this context, also legislative councillors are very important conduit for us to better understand and take uh, public opinion yes. and what is the primary concern at the time mm. of the people. So I think uh, keep a humble heart, open mind, mm. uh, talk to more people, interact more and try to reach out more would be the key. Mm. 
Uh, Paul, when you prepare the, um, the government's budget, uh, I know it must be a very challenging task, uh, mm -hmm. but there must be also comes with a lot of opportunity for you to reshape uh, and regrow Hong Kong. Uh, what are the you know uh, things that come to mind? Well, you know, at the moment, there are indeed headwinds. Uh, mm. Geopolitics is one, uh, the US-China relationship. Mm. I think this challenge will continue to be there. Yes. And there is also a lot of uncertainties. Mm. Say, for example, although uh, people expect interest rate to come down, that the, the pace of uh, such interest rate deduction is still uncertain. Mm. The US election is another uncertainty. Yes. And also in the neighborhood, uh, over the past few years, mm. because of geopolitics, uh, because of the uh, proposition of uh, fence soaring, resoaring, we see supply chain shifts. Mm. So this will also have an impact on our export. Mm. Going forward, I think it is important to sustain our economic growth. Mm. Uh, at the moment, there are things that we may not be able control to, yes. to control, mm. as I mentioned earlier, geopolitics. Mm. Mm. But there are also areas that we could be more proactive. Mm. Uh, say, for example, how to stimulate consumption, yes. how to attract more tourists, yes. how to grow our economies, yes. uh, attracting more business enterprises to come. Mm. So uh, going forward, on the one hand, in terms of risk management, we have to be very vigilant, mm. uh, monitor the different sectors of the financial market, make mm. sure financial stability is there, mm. uh, make sure our currency stability is preserved. Mm. But at the same time, proactively reach out to to showcase to the world the story of Hong Kong, mm. the good story of China. Mm. I think a lot of this communication is necessary. Mm. Uh, at the moment, I think apart from the traditional US and European market, mm. we have to open up new markets. Which, Say for example, yeah. Middle East, mm. ASEAN, uh, particularly Middle East, when we visit them, when we discuss with them, they also s saw the need of diversification. Mm. So there is tremendous interest from the Middle East in this part of the world. Mm. But interestingly, mm. their understanding about us, about the mainland, is comparatively limited. So I think going forward, apart from inviting them to come, we mm. need to lead different delegations mm. to visit them, to do business matching, to find opportunities to work together, and even to co-invest in certain projects, mm. which would be conducive to our own economic development. Apart from the Middle East, it would be the ASEAN. Mm. Uh, because according to some studies, by the year 2030, ASEAN collectively will overtake EU as the number four largest economies globally. Mm. And Hong Kong people have a lot of connections and good relations, mm. and even friends and relatives in ASEAN. So this is also a market closer to home, and with this people-to-people -people bond, we are in a better position to open it up and to assist them to make inroads into the mainland market. Um, Hong Kong uh, recently played host to uh, the Asian Financial Forum. Oh yeah, most successful. Um, you were there. Um, you know what are the takeaways from that? It is important to invite people to come, to see for themselves mm. what is going on here, what is the real situation here. Because over the past few years, there have been a negative narrative about this part of the world. Mm. Mm. So it is important for us to reach out to tell the Hong Kong story, mm. but at the same time, invite people to come. Mm. They see for themselves, they talk to their friends. Then, in most of the cases, they told us, it is eye-opening. This is very different from what they had heard or read in the media. Mm. So we'll continue to do that. Mm. And I have also uh, had indications from those investment funds, mm. uh, no matter at the Financial Leaders Forum or at Davos, saying that hmm, this is an area they would increase their investments mm. and headcounts mm. because the medium to long-term outlook of mainland and developing Asia is much more promising. Mm. And this would be an area they cannot afford to miss. And is Hong Kong a good springboard for businesses from around the world to springboard into a big market opportunities in other parts of the Greater Bay Area or you know, outside countries? 
economies. What, what, do you, what do you think? Using Hong Kong to go into the GBA is very natural. Yeah. And particularly now with the relaxation of the visa policy from the mainland, allowing expatriates in Hong Kong to have multiple entry visa into the GBA area. This facilitate a lot of business travels and mm. investments. Mm. So GBA is an area we work together and we must know our respective strength. Yes. For Hong Kong, we are basically service oriented. Mm. We are very strong in financial services and to a certain extent, innovation and technology. Yes. But at the same time, we need to work with, say, Shenzhen because they have a more complete industry chain, more complete manufacturing capabilities. Mm. And looking beyond Shenzhen, Dongguan, Weizhou, also advanced manufacturing. Mm. And go a little further to Guangzhou, mm. tremendous consumer market. In the GBA, altogether, about 87 million people. The per capita GDP uh, is about 22,000 US dollar. Mm. Huge consumer mm. markets. Yes. What can sell in the GBA will be able to sell in China. Mm. So this is the value proposition that we put forward to many of the, uh, particularly those companies in the consumer market in the US and Europe. Not to be missed. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Now we come to our fun rapid fire questions where we get up close and personal with our guest, Paul. Uh, I will fire some rapid fire questions at you. There are no right or wrong answers. I'll feel free to say whatever comes to your mind okay. first. Your favorite food? Garupa. Favorite book? Well, navigating that crisis. Favorite place in Hong Kong? Mayho House. First job? Well, teacher. Person you like to say thanks to? Oh, of course, my wife. One thing you like to learn? Skiing. If you were to write a book, what would be the name of the book? Well, there are every reason to be optimistic. Advice you would give to your younger self? Work hard. Believe in yourself. Vision for Hong Kong's future? Hong Kong will continue to prosper as an IFC, an innovation and technology center. Totally agree. Thank you, Paul. Thank That's you, all the Nick. time we Thank have you. today. I'll see you next time on a Friday Beyond Spotlights. I know um, this place brings back some childhood memories, but to do more than that, um, we have a little something uh, from our staff here from Beyond. Surprise! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your wife said uh, you, you like pineapple yeah. butter. Good. Oh, very <laughs> nice. Where's your favorite place to buy pineapple butter? Small little bakery shop in Nam Sang Chin.